In this video, we discuss three so-called rapid application development approaches, as well as the agile development approach. These four different approaches or methodologies are really in contrast to the three structured approaches. And they're, they are newer. And what they focus on is getting systems developed much more quickly. Um, even if you don't know what all of the requirements are initially. Now, these methodologies also are rather unique in that they use special techniques and tools to speed things along. So-called case tools, computer-aided systems engineering tools, which are software packages that you use to actually document all of the requirements and design specifications for a system in an integrated fashion. Case tools will also help you write the code. It'll spit out stubs of the programming code that you need. So it's a productivity tool to speed along the process of developing an information system. JAD sessions are joint application development sessions. You get people together, small groups, to talk face to face about the requirements and what needs to be done so-called visual programming languages. I'm sure you've encountered them. Visual Basic. Again, these are productivity techniques and tools. And code generators, um, uh, software that actually produces some of the computer code that you need from your design analysis and design specifications. These are the first three rapid application development approaches. They, they're similar, but they do have distinctions. It's so-called iterative development, where you develop a series of versions sequentially. So-called system prototyping and throwaway prototyping, which again are, are similar to each other. System prototyping, you very quickly create a model of the system, a design of the system that is not complete. You show it to users, you get their feedback. Then you go back through the planning analysis design phase concurrently and you incrementally build the system in a cycle. Throwaway prototyping is very similar to system prototyping, where you build a prototype very quickly, but then you, you don't use it in the, in the final design process. OK, this is the, the so-called iterative development methodology, the first RAD approach. And what you do here is you you have a series of versions that are developed sequentially. This is different from the parallel approach that we looked at before. In the parallel approach, that waterfall version, you get to a general design, and then you split, split the project into sub-projects. You don't do that here. What you do here is you uh, finish up the planning phase and the analysis phase, and then you go through a series of very fast analysis design implementation activities where only the most important and fundamental requirements are first bundled into this first version of the system. It's not complete. So you have kind of a quick and dirty mini waterfall process where you get a partially working system. Then at this point, users provide feedback and say, well, yes, but there are these additional requirements and we need it to do this and that. And so you go through another mini waterfall analysis design implementation, get a second system version. Again, the users provide feedback. Then you incorporate those new requirements until you finally get to the final system. Users get a system more quickly. Problems are related to the fact that users really have an incomplete system and must be patient and wait for a fully functioning system. Now, both system prototyping and throwaway prototyping are similar, um, but in system prototyping, you go through the analysis in both of them, system and throwaway, you go through analysis design implementation phases concurrently to very quickly get to an initial system prototype 
that is shown to the users and the users provide feedback and then you incorporate that feedback into another concurrent execution of analysis design implementation to get a refined system prototype which the users look at and provide more feedback and you keep going through this this loop where the users provide feedback on these prototypes until the user feedback becomes so small that there aren't any more changes to make. And at that point, you go off into implementation and you develop the system. Again, this approach speeds things up. Users see the prototype very quickly and you have feedback cycles to let users identify changes. User involvement is always good. The earlier you can get users involved, the better the system will be. Um, there, the initial versions are, are superficial and don't have a lot of features. And sometimes it's more difficult to incorporate those features later. This slide is actually wrong. If you go to the book and you look at figure 2.7 on page 45, this is the throwaway prototyping approach. There's an additional block here called design. And there's an arrow from analysis to this design block to implementation. So this is very similar to the system prototyping, but you have this added design prototype layer that's not shown here, which is not intended to be a working system. Again, these design prototypes are thrown away, similar to the previous. You go through analysis design implementation concurrently, and you get a design prototype as well as a system prototype. But these are thrown away. The design prototype is thrown away. And you keep going through the system prototyping cycle, very similar to what you did in the previous prototyping approach. So you minimize uncertainty, but again, it may take longer compared to system prototyping. This is the fourth non-waterfall approach, so-called agile development methodologies. And these are rather new and actually are very skill-based are executed in small teams of people where you have um, this agile development methodologies. These are actually a group. It's not just one approach. It's a group of programming-centric methodologies where much of the laborious, voluminous modeling and documentation overhead is eliminated for face-to-face -face conversation with these small agile teams. And there, there are different approaches to this. Um, extreme programming, XP, Scrum, Dynamic System Development Method, DSDM. These are very uh, skill-based. You have to have teams that are very experienced in doing this and know how to do it for it to be done well. It's not for large-scale projects. It's definitely for smaller projects. Again, you get fast delivery of results. It's very good for projects in which you know that you don't know what the requirements are up front. It's skill-based. It requires training and discipline to do it right. And again, you must have significant user involvement, uh, which actually is an advantage if they are involved. Again, it works best in smaller projects.